Hi, this screencast is to help people revise Financial Accounting 1B. We're going to look at the exam paper from May 2016 and uh, just looking at question 1 today. So question 1 gives you a trial balance from a company at the end of December 2015. Lots of accounts at the end of the year and notes and it asks you in the requirement to prepare three things an income statement, a statement of changes in equity and a statement of financial position and there are marks going for the three of these if you do a good attempt at this question one you you know you should be getting 30 marks out of 40 or maybe more even 25 marks out of 40 and that will really stand to you in passing the paper so the this screencast will show you how to just get the format for each of these three things the income statement the change in equity and the financial position because if you get the format right then uh, it's a case of just filling out the format and to help you get the format we're going to look at question two because in question two which is a question it gives you an income statement and also a statement of financial position and asks you to prepare ratios so we don't care about what it asks what we're interested in is that it actually gives us most of the format that we need for a statement of financial position and an income statement and we're going to use this format to answer question one so uh, I'm going to skip down to question two again and uh, see how we're going to use it. So to start part A you just go to a blank sheet and put in the heading it's a company, we know it's a company because it's limited so it's a company uh, and put in the heading income statement for the company for the year end December 2015 then we need to put in the headings and we come down to question two for an income statement and here we have the income statement of Kelly so it's nearly these headings that could put down except there's one or two adjustments that because uh, not adjustments with extra lines that need to go in but there's only you know maybe two extra lines and they're easy to remember so sales less cost of sales gross profit and other income they are exactly the same so you just enter them into your worksheet And that's what I've done there. Sales, cost of sales. Sales less cost of sales gives you gross profit. And to that, I'm going to add other income. And we'll go back and look at our format. And then we have expenses. Now, we need to give a breakdown or a bit more detail on expenses. And so you just got to remember that we divide expenses between administration and distribution. So really, we've just two extra lines here. So sales, cost, sales, gross profit, income, and then administration and distribution expense and then what gets added the only other thing that gets added the interest line as well two types of interest income or expense or expense and income it doesn't really matter what order the same with administration distribution as long as you have them either as distribution administration or vice versa and same with this so really that's the format that goes in and you just got to remember you're going to add this much detail for expenses and interest is going to be two lines expense and income or income and expense and here it is and that is the format for the income statement and it's pretty easy you don't even have to remember much all you need to remember is that it's on question two and you just need to add in these two extra lines for expenses and interest and that's it now the format for part B the statement of changes in equity. Now unfortunately question two or no other question in the paper gives you a format for changes in equity so you've got to remember what it is now, and it's it's pretty straightforward so first of all same as before I go to my worksheet and I put in the heading so clearly label it part B so the examiner knows when they're correcting what part you're answering and just put in your heading and remember it's for the year end December 15. Next then we go to 
we'll go to our trial balance and here we have question one the trial balance and the very top of the trial balance are the things that go into equity so equity are money that the investors or the owners of the business have invested in the business so they've bought shares they've invested they've purchased ordinary shares which gives them voting rights in the company they've also purchased preference shares here and preference shares generally don't give the owner any voting rights or ownership rights in the company but what they do give is a guaranteed return normally so here the return is five percent on those preference shares and the holder of those shares so say one person so, so uh, <laughs> that's not worry about that but what that means is that every year those shares which are worth 40 million will give a return of five percent and a return on shares is called a dividend so the dividend on those shares will be 40 multiplied by 5% which is 2 million. So there are four things. Uh, there's the shares and then if you're the owners of the company you own the shares that's what's invested that's part of equity and also the profits of the company belong to you. So retained earnings is another name for retained profits and what they've said here is retained earnings at, at the first of January so at the start of the year they had that much profits left over and they also had a general reserve and a reserve is another type of profits so it's where they've just taken some of the money out of their profits and just put it into another type of savings account or reserve account that's earmarked for something else so in some questions it may be called a building reserve or an acquisition reserve so what the company are doing there is they're saving money or putting money aside either to acquire other companies or for the building reserve to build a building for example so for in this question these four things are our equity and they go into the statement of changes in equity and so we we'll go back down to our worksheet and put in the headings and this goes across the page like in landscape mode really is the easiest way to do it and we've got our ordinary share capital, general reserve, retained earnings and preference shares exactly the same as we saw them here and I nearly put them in the same order as they appear just remember debentures is not part of equity uh, debentures is a loan, it's uh, non-current liability, it's separate so just these four amounts if there was share premium it would go in here into equity as well uh, but there's none in this question so there are the four things. The opening balances are here, 100, 10, 34, 40. They just get added to the worksheet. And there's our opening balances. And the statement of changes in equities just to tell us how these opening balances change during the year. So the main one that's going to change is the retained earnings balance. Because if we make a profit or a loss this year, the retained earnings is going to go up or down up for a profit down for a loss so we're going to add any other profit so the the end figure from part a the profit for the year after tax just gets inserted here then what else reduces our profits or our retained earnings if the company pays out any dividends that reduces your profits because that's what a dividend is it's a share of the company's profit being paid to the shareholders so Generally, there are three types of dividends. There's dividends in ordinary shares, interim dividend, which is a dividend paid during the year, a final dividend paid at year end, and there's also dividends on preference shares. So those guys go in. And the last thing that can change this is if a question tells you that money is to be taken out of retained earnings and put into a reserve. And in these questions, that's really it. That's the format. And you just, I suppose you have to remember that. And then we do that and get the closing balance. So later on we'll work through how these figures change. So part C, the third part of question one, asks us to prepare a statement of financial position. So to do that, we get help from looking at question two, the ratio question, which gives us a statement of financial position here. And these are the headings. You have non-current assets, so current assets that's the top half. There's two parts to a statement of financial position. The top part is where you give the assets. Non-current assets are long-term assets that are going to be there for longer than a year. Current assets are shorter-term assets. And then in the bottom half, it tells us 
where we got the money to purchase those assets. So uh, equity is money invested by shareholders and the profits that belong to them, and then money that's borrowed. Non-current liabilities, long-term borrowings, and a long-term loan would go in here, or a debenture. A debenture is a is a where a company is a particular form of borrowing by a company where they borrow from someone and give them a, a note which says we will. It's, it's called a debenture, which more or less says it's like an IOU, and it says we will pay X amount of interest, and we will repay this loan on a certain date and give you so much interest every year. So it's just basically long-term loan, and current liabilities. So these are headings. So you just come to your uh, worksheet, Statement of Financial Position, so Part C I should put down there, and Assets, so the top half, Non-Current Assets, Current Assets, the bottom half are, are Equity, Non-Current Liabilities and Current Liabilities, so there's a bit of space there and we're going to fill it out. The Assets section, the Non-Current Assets is fairly easy to do. There's no breakdown given in question two here, but we just got to remember that there are three types of non-current assets. Tangible, which are assets that you can see, kick or touch, things like plant and machinery, equipment, motor vehicles, furniture, buildings. Intangible are assets that are maybe not physical but are worth money, so goodwill is one that's an intangible asset. A patent or a trademark might be another type of intangible asset. Goodwill is where someone pays more for a company than the physical assets are worth. And so if you pay more for some th for a company, then why did you pay the extra money? It, and so goodwill is is that intangible asset. And the third type of asset is a financial asset. And that would be if a company had invested in shares or some type of financial investment. So we just put those into our headings. And here are the three tangible, intangible, financial. Current assets doesn't change that much. The the main ones are here already inventory receivables, bank, and perhaps if there were prepayments would go in as well. So we just put those in under the current assets heading. And I didn't put bank here because there wasn't a bank in the question, but you could have bank as well. So in this second half of the statement of financial position we're going to do equity and liabilities. So here's our equity section and we already know the headings for equity. It's the headings from the trial balance and here are the two extra that were their reserves, general reserve and preference shares and those four go into the worksheet. And that's them there and it, the headings will just depend on what's in the trial balance. So here, ordinary share capital reserves, retained earnings and preference shares. Sometimes that reserve might be called a different name like building or acquisitions reserve. S and still looking at question two, no change, non-current liabilities, debentures, and these are the headings for current liabilities. So we just add those. In. And that is the format for part A, B and C. And if you can get that much done, then it's just a case of filling out. So the next screencast will just bring bring us through each part A, part B, part C, each one separately, and fill in the the amounts that are outstanding that need to go in. So I hope that's useful. Please take a look at the following screencast to finish off the question.